Happy Friday! We have got a lot coming up, including Joe Biden saying vaccine mandates should not be an issue that divides us. Uh, also, Pete Buttigieg apparently has been on paid leave uh, for paternity the last two months, even though there is a supply chain crisis. Does that surprise you? I don't think so. We've got a lot coming up today, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Those were just my, my new best friends that wished you a happy Friday. Uh, I am also joined by Jakob Buyans, host of the Jakob Buyans Show, Blaze TV contributor. Thank you for being here. Uh, also joined, uh, we've got a double dose of Dave Raboy, fellow over at the Claremont Institute, also writer over at Late Republic Nonsense, uh, which you should be subscribed to. Thank so you. thanks for thanks for being here. Great to be here. Yes. Uh, so Friday, you know, Fridays are always weird. It's like oh, it's, the headline, the news is kind of slow. The headlines are kind of, eh. but uh, we do have a lot to cover today. Uh, let's start with Joe Biden, who yesterday called on, of course. Again, uh, okay, well, we're not going to start with that because apparently they don't have it yet. So what we're going to start with is uh, let's go ahead and start with the uh, Washington Governor Jay Inslee. Do we have that one, Control? Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced yesterday that large events will soon be required to confirm attendees have either been fully vaccinated against COVID-19 or that they have tested negative for the illness within the prior 72 hours. Uh, this is applicable uh, to attendees age 12 and older. It will go into effect November 15th. And not only does it pertain to indoor events involving 1,000 or more people, it also pertains to outdoor events involving more than 10,000 individuals in attendance. Uh, by the way, Inslee said K through 12 school related events that take place on school grounds are exempt from the mandate and religious services are also exempt. I'd like to throw into that as well. I know um, I want to get to what Joe Biden said, but I know that they're working on that. So let me also throw into the equation uh, Gavin Newsom, because I, I, I read this and I'm like, this is completely arbitrary. Make it make sense. And I know I've said this for the past 18 months. Make this make sense. You can't. Uh, Gavin Newsom, you know, he wants all kids in public schools to be vaccinated, but he is now fighting vaccine mandates for prison guards. Uh, coincidentally enough, the union for prison guards gave him one point seven five million uh, to fight his recall. So um, and then and by the way, Joe Biden's vaccine mandate for federal workers, of course, exempts the United States Postal Service. So you're reading all these things and you're like, I don't understand how this is uh, very sciencey. This does not seem very sciencey, guys. There's no science. We know there's no science behind it. It's interesting that you're covering Inslee and Newsom on the same show because these guys are buddies. They're running a pack. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, absolutely. And you know, all, all the all the comprehensive sex ed bills that mm -hmm. Newsom signed, he signs it within a week. NZ signs it. So it's it's they run in a pack. So these, these this is the Rat Pack, literally the Rat Pack. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's no science behind it, and they go wherever they get money. Whoever lobbies them, the lobbyist. That this is why Big Pharma wins. This is why these guys dance. This is why Abbott's dancing because there's Big Pharma even here in Texas, right? But those two guys particularly are highly compromised mm. uh, on every level. And you can, we can line it up. Anything nefarious to children, vaccine-related, you can just line it up. Uh, you know, Newsom leads and Inslee is right on his heels. And with some, with some strong draconian kind of oversight, overlord, at times even not letting school boards, state school boards, vote on things. These guys will just sign executive orders like this like crazy. So... I'm glad you're covering both of them. Just play whack-a-mole mm. with the two bad guys in, in one episode. I like it. <laughs> but they you're know welcome. that there's absolutely not, there's just, you know, I mean, these guys aren't going to pay any kind of, you know, consequences right. for any of this. I yeah. mean, Newsom famously, uh, you know, went to the, the French Laundry and, mm -hmm. and, you know, threw a party while he was, while he was pushing lockdowns and, and, I mean, I'm sure you can go from, I mean, Pritzker in, in yeah. Illinois, yeah. Yep. and all of these guys, I'm sure Murphy in New Gretchen Jersey. Gretchen Whitmer. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. There's not one of these these governors, these Democrat governors, who who haven't gotten caught 
in a kind of hypocrisy, uh, COVID hypocrisy situation, but they don't care. Because I think what, what happened is, like, we see all these, these insane rules. And I think, I mean, part of it is control. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But part of it, too, is that, like, they have managed to create over the last year and, and change a lot of folks out there who are desperate to feel, you know, to feel like they're in a crisis. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and to wait and, and to wait for the and to yeah, wait for the end. government to tell them yeah. what the next step is. What do I do? I'm waiting with bated breath for big daddy government to tell me right. what to do. And they're exploiting something that's been underlying in our culture for a long time. This is why we see unprecedented suicide rate and depression rates, because we at, we really do have a culture that lacks true identity, individual mm -hmm. identity. And fear is a phenomenal replacement. Mm -hmm. sure. And then you jump on a bandwagon. This is why people would line up to go burn cities down and now rob grocery stores and, you know, and, and, and pharmacies because they need purpose. Mm -hmm. They right. need identity. And these guys understand very well. They're great storytellers, mm -hmm. all right? And they understand how to set a narrative and give someone a purpose. And this is also why when you stop them, you know, people in the street, it's so surface level. They can't defend their action. It's not a conviction. It's just, I need something to do. My life is empty. Give me purpose. And I say, yeah, welcome. Join the vaccine club. Join the, the draconian club. Or join the club that's going to have double standards and replay to one standard and you to another. And they're bold about it. Right. Yeah. And, it's, and it's what, you know, what, uh, you know, the, the kind of Woodrow Wilson era progressives would have called the moral equivalent of war. Yeah. And, Absolutely. you know, it gives them something to do. It gives them an enemy. It gives them motivation. It gives them, you know, it gives them a, uh, a purpose. Purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And it's dangerous because it, it, they grab onto it. Right. They, they no, grab no. a hold of it. They'll no, defend no. it. Of yeah. course. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to uh, what I originally wanted to start with, which is, you know, we're, we're discussing how uh, arbitrary all of this is and how it's just about the Democrats wanting to control everything. And sadly, how many Americans uh, go along with that. But I want to get to the other portion of this, which is how they use it as a way to divide us while also gaslighting us and telling us uh, this should we shouldn't be divided over this. What are you talking about? We've just spent this entire 18 months, well, no, I guess only since the beginning of the year when the vaccine was available, we've just spent all of this time demonizing you if you didn't agree with it. But but please, that, that, shouldn't, that should not divide us. Listen to Joe Biden yesterday. Let's be clear. Vaccination requirements should not be another issue that divides us. That's why we continue to battle the misinformation that's out there. And companies and communities are setting up their uh, stepping up as well to combat these the, the misinformation. Southwest Airlines, at the head of the pilot, the head of the pilots' union and its CEO, dismissed critics who claim vaccination mandates contributed to flight disruptions. School board members, religious leaders, and doctors across the country are fighting misinformation and educating people about the importance of vaccines. So basically, let's not let this divide us. It's just that you need to agree with us. Don't don't divide us by disagreeing with us. Right. Yeah, what's wrong right. with you? Right, right. You're so disagreeable. What what is wrong with you guys? You don't let this divide us. It's just that you guys are the problem. Right. Yeah, we, <laughs> it's you incredible. Know this, yeah, exactly. But this misinformation term, right? I'm so sick of it. Also, yeah. it's not even about information. It's just about liberty. It's about individual rights. It's not That's a great about, point. Even if the vaccine was a hundred percent effective, was no side effects. Effective. Yeah, Take yeah, yeah. The yeah. We have the long-term studies. Right. I don't care. Right. Right. We still have individual liberty. Yeah. And that's the violation here. Yeah. It's how dare you allow something as a forced mandate divide us? Mm -hmm. You should bow down. We are. I'm the emperor, right? right? And but you're the peasant. And I go, oh heck no. But yeah. from their perspective, as the moral equivalent of war, I mean, you know, the three of us see this thing and, 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 you know, and from the beginning, maybe we were alarmed and we took some precautions and OK. And and as we learned more about the virus, like, OK, it's not that much worse than the flu. Yeah. 
right. you know, if at and all. And you got in big trouble if you said that at the beginning. Right. Like, well, I, you know, at the beginning, I was like, it's, it sounds like a bad flu. And they're yeah. like, oh, right. how well, dare we you? Held, we held that line from the beginning. Yeah. I was yes. never, okay. I'm going to have to yeah. three of us yes. some real yes. issues. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. So, so we, we, were, kind, we were kind of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we, we kind of saw this for, for what it was. But our fellow Americans, many of them, millions of them, half mm -hmm. of them, mm -hmm. went completely crazy. Mm -hmm. Because of fear. Because of fear. Fear yeah, is yeah, powerful. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. had people, this was my, my favorite, this was when I knew the whole thing was nonsense BS. When they came out and they said, look, here is a supermarket aisle, and if you're in one aisle, the, the, the virus will jump over the, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> jump over the food and it will get you in the next aisle. And I was like, you know what, if this is true, and if it was true that, remember when they said, oh, you know, it stays on surfaces for hours Correct. or days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know what? Everybody's getting it. Yeah. Don't, yeah. You, you may as well leave your house and for, forget everything because you are going to get it. Right. It's, You'll get it on purpose. Right. Build some immunity. That's my stance. And that's a, that's a radical stance. Well, that should I'm, certainly be a choice. Yeah, it should be my yeah. choice. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then where, <laughs> the science, science is nowhere unless you run a double blind study. And so we should have said, okay, Poland. You guys decide to do this. We're not going to do that. Or We're going to or Sweden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to use fear over here. You guys are not doing it. Let's run a head to head foot race. And we would have lost. And we are losing in that foot race yeah. because it's proven out better over there. And so but still, for me, it just comes back down to our constitutional rights. Yeah. I don't care how effective it is or not. It's my choice. Well, that's a great point, but I, I think that that's part of their play, right? right. Is to get is to get yes. your eye off of the actual principle that you're trying to defend yes. and make it about well, the art. What you're not going to follow the science. The you're argument. not going to trust yeah. the experts. You're not going to what? What are you a conspiracy theorist? What are you putting on a tinfoil hat? And the the farther that they move the conversation to someplace else, the yes. less you can come back and defend your because own principle. Their entire you know, reason to exist for the last hundred years from the, from the left is to, to diminish and delegitimize these rights. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. They, you yeah. cannot have a rights conversation with the left. And depopulate. Right, yeah. right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. We got we to gotta, we gotta take a break uh, a little early here. I think we're having some technical issues. But let's go ahead and first, I do have to thank our sponsor, Bonner Wine, because as we know, it is a uh, Friday. And you guys know, I never go anywhere without wine close by, specifically Bonner, because Bonner is very, very different. It's very unique because they grow these grapes at 9,000 feet over in the mountains in Argentina. And if you're not a wine person, you may not realize that growing these grapes at such a high altitude produces a very unique wine with so much amazing flavor that you cannot find anywhere else. And guess what else? You're not gonna pay a fortune. You're not, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to buy this wine. Uh, and you don't have to go buy the crappy wines at the grocery store. All right, so you gotta try it. Uh, they've got a bunch of Malbecs. You are not gonna wanna miss. These are very, very rare. They keep flying off the shelves. So make sure that you go and get some, okay? It is over at cowgirlwine2021.com. You will get 50% off of the wine, 50% off of the shipping. You don't need to remember a promo code. I know I have a lot of people who are like, Sarah, what is the promo code for that thing that you just talked about? Because I really wanna get it. You don't need a promo code for this one. I've done that to you. You have done that to me. Thank you. Sarah, what's that promo code? You Can have I say done something that. about Bonner? Yeah, please. You know, I've never I tasted alcohol yes, in yeah, my yeah, life, yeah, yeah. but I'll buy wine for my friends. For your friends. Enjoy. So I bought Bonner because of you. Yeah. But one of my friends is a level four sommelier, and he's about to be a level five. Uh -oh. So a few, 1,200 in the world or whatever. Wow. And rank this through the roof. No way. Yeah, I real. love so, that. So, so, I don't know anything about wine, but he does. And he's excited about it. So it's got to wow. be really good. So listen, when I was saying before, trust the experts, he's but really trust the experts yeah. this time, this time. Okay. Level four sommelier just says like, this is amazing and it's a steal. So you got to go get some. All right. Cowgirlwine2021.com. That is cowgirlwine2021.com. Uh, a demonstration in D.C. against fossil fuel projects turned violent Thursday. And I'm just saying it was a very big threat to, well, what the left would call our democracy, but we don't actually have a democracy. So I'm gonna say it was a threat to our republic. Uh, climate change protesters 
in an act of insurrection, stormed the U.S. Department of the Interior building and occupied a space inside a federal building for hours. Whoa. Hours. Are you shocked that you guys did not? It's worse than I even know about it. Yeah. Totally worse than 9-11. Yeah. I'm, it's yeah. way worse than 9-11. I was afraid that they were coming for me yeah. here in Texas. Yes, for sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, just like AOC was very Move concerned AOC on- AOC move, you were two buildings over. But, but I, w I wonder, are we gonna see some solitary confinement from that group? Are we, are we gonna see some, you know, some- mm. I'm sure none of them were arrested. No, no arrest. Yeah. Nobody's off but no they were flight, let out. flight list. Right. No solitary confinement. The, the, the irony when I look at that picture, okay? I can pick 50 elements that I see on screen that they're wearing that is made from petroleum <laughs> products. <laughs> That's right. what I love. That's what I love. Here, okay, so let's, this is actually a video. So let's play this. This was, of course, before they actually okay. occupied inside. This is, no one wants to hear you say. The wheelchairs are strategically placed. Attention, this is Lieutenant Swope of the United States Park Police. Because you are in violation of regulations applicable to this area under DC code 22-1307, prohibiting crowding, obstructing, or incommoding, you must leave the White House sidewalk now. We are using the available exit to your front and to the park. All persons remaining are subject to arrest. This is your second warning. Whoa, they got a second warning? It's an insurrection. They got a second warning. And then, let me just say, Washington, Washington Post actually did cover this. We got to give credit where credit is due. Washington Post reporter, I don't think she meant to tell on her own people, but she said uh, on Twitter, Ellie Silverman, climate <sighs> protesters are pushing police, trying to force their way into the Department of the Interior, where other activists have made it inside in an attempt to occupy the Building. I can't believe we're seeing another insurrection yep. this year. 1014, this was yesterday, 1014. Where were you on this darkest day in the United States, this insurrection of the Department of Interior? Where were you? I hope you always remember we have seen dark, dark days. Ladies and gentlemen, I wonder what Ryan Zinke would have done when he was, you know, when Zinke was leading the department on his, on of his yeah. horse, <laughs> you know, under Trump. You know, when the, when the petroleum loaded gang yeah. come through, they, they can't. They don't even know. This is the issue. What I was saying earlier. They're so empty. There's so little going on in their lives that they would go make a fake. You know, oil and gas rig while wearing petroleum oh, products. I look, mean, I mean, they love to do this. I mean, this I, is so what they I, live li for. I lived in San Francisco for a while oh, during, God bless you. you know, back in in, in you know, actually during the during the the Gulf War or the okay. Iraq the, yeah. the Iraq War. So era. it's been a while. The Iraq yeah. War okay. era, okay. yeah. And I was at a party and blah blah, blah and, and 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 I open a door and it's a big room and it's dark and I turn on a light. And in this room was the storehouse for where all the leftists would, would you know, when they have these weird puppets, like puppets of George W. Bush, was all the closet. crazy protest props <laughs> were in this room. Oh, weird. It was like Rumsfeld with blood dripping, and it was like, you know, all the craziness <laughs> and the big signs that's, you know, whatever, yeah, all, all, yeah. The, all the, 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 the stuff. And I just start to laugh. I'm like, here I am with this way because it's got to be somewhere. Did you have a little oops you know? arson moment? <laughs> no, I, 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 I should have. I, I should have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I would have. I would have gone to Leavenworth. You know, <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's, it's not a joke. Yeah. But, but it, it's interesting. Like this, just watching this protest, we um, we kind of compared the violence of Antifa last year mm -hmm. to the you know, January 6th The grandmas thing. waving their American right. flags. That mm -hmm. wasn't an apt comparison. Mm -hmm. This is an apt mm -hmm. comparison Correct. because these are like, you know, white-haired boomers. Yeah. And January 6th was predominantly white-haired boomers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seems like about the same level of energy, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, exactly. in, in, yeah. in both places. Yeah. Um, so, you know, while Antifa is just totally you know, I mean, they're just they're just burning stuff to the ground and right. just you know they're young, mentally ill, right? 
Right. You know. Right. But people. I mean, we're not going to see these people, no. as you pointed out, Yaku, held in solitary confinement. Oh, oh no, no, of course, of course. These are leading the you know, news on, you know, CNN, the right. headlines for the next two weeks. Pull them by weeks. their feet through their yard at 70, 80 yeah. years old. Yeah, right. yeah, like yeah, them, yeah. Right. Having Wolf Blitzer uh, exactly. tweet out a picture of himself nine months later, saying, "I, I am now." by the Department of Interior building only nine months after that horrible insurrection. Right. I mean, how many, uh, how many bumper stickers <laughs> total do you think all of those people have on their cars? Yeah. 100,000, so 200,000? Oh my God. So many. Yeah. Like no, coexist so with this and that, 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 that. No, look, the crazies come out and birds of a feather, you know, that this is this, but nothing's gonna happen. This is the double standard, but it's just so predictable. Mm -hmm. you, you can, you, and I kind of like it now, you know, not, not <laughs> the diapers, yeah. but yeah, the yeah, masks yeah. are off. You walk around yeah. now and you know. It, right. Oh, right. Or narco tyranny. Yeah, right. come on. Right. These guys right. can do, you know, the law applies to one group of people yeah. and the other group of people, you know, are special. No, but we, no, but we gotta keep them alive though. We, we gotta pay the taxes. Yeah. We got to bring them food. Mm. We got to grow the food. They're not going to, no way, are <laughs> right. they going to go do anything? <laughs> right. We're like Chaz and Shop. Hey, we need food. That was funny. Oh, yeah, we, are yeah, totally yeah, yeah. Oh, we are totally autonomous. All right. Totally we'll autonomous, right. but hey, right. we got to eat. We need some food. What do you right. think we are? You think we're smart? <laughs> All right, let's do a trade. Okay, you've convinced <laughs> us. Uh, no, but I want to just kind of touch on the other aspect of this, which is, I mean, these are climate change activists, right? So this is a Democrat administration. Obviously, I think the Democrats, as much as they would like to say that they are a moderate uh, administration, they are obviously not. So even in this administration, climate change activists, not happy. Obviously, they've been radicalized by people, uh, the, the fringes mm -hmm. within their party for all of these years, and now they're pissed off because the establishment is not going to give them what they want. It's what we see so often with immigration yep. and all of these things. So it's like, what is going to happen? Who's going to win this war? Because they've been promised all these things for so long and they're not gonna be happy until they get it. But I don't think they're going to find an administration that's going to give it to them. I, I, I actually would like to answer you on that. This is what happened in South Africa. When the administration came in in 1995, Nelson Mandela and his administration, the African National Congress promised, way over promised, yeah. right? And the left here always over promises. Mm -hmm. Actually, they never held to account to actually deliver anything, mm -hmm. right? And it took many years. It took 26 years for that to catch up. And that's what you saw this year when South Africa was on fire inside the ANC and they finally called them on it, right? But it mm -hmm. took 26 years. Mm -hmm. So I think it eventually does catch up. I pray that they're not in office long enough to, for it even to right. be an issue. But right. I think eventually it does catch up. And normally, historically around the world, it is a, it is a, maybe not a split, but a war inside a party, yeah. which would be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Well, but eventually they, they kind of get what they want in the end, don't they? I mean, they overpromise now. Yeah. But, you They're know, just so these people that over are pissed. To window just right. A little yeah. bit the more. next Democrat administration is going to do is yeah. going yeah. to do yeah. things yeah. Yeah. that are far more radical yeah. than this one would. Yeah. 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 Well, fair. as we're seeing now. Look, I mean, yeah. who would have thought you have Barack Obama and Joe Biden? you know, side by side. Who would have thought you have more, uh, Joe Biden would be the radical? He's, it's not yeah. that he's the radical, right, right. it's yes. that here we are further right. down in they've, the movie. They've, yeah. yeah, they've got a, well, and I think that that's why, uh, one of many reasons why our good friend Robert Francis O'Rourke was not uh, taken on by the party so kindly because he, he kept saying the quiet parts out loud. He's like, right. yeah, I'm coming for your guns. And like, shut up, we're not telling them They'll that. Them we're the pretending we're not. Don't give you them gotta, the playbook. You gotta go slowly, you can't just tell them. But the irony, you know, I had an interesting meeting this week, the same group who controlled Obama is controlling Biden, but the issue is Obama was actually strong, and he's an intelligent guy. He's a slick he's guy. A smart guy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very. Con I would say cunning. Cunning. Okay, yeah. Joe is sleepwalking, right? right? And so now it's just like because, oh, and I've said this so many times, Barack Obama was not radical enough for his puppet masters. They wanted him, and this is why they thought Hillary was going to win because Hillary would drop the hammer, and then they said, let's just go full full Monty, let's get a a the Walking Dead to. Mm -hmm. come come play president and yeah. then we can have what we want and now we're seeing them just go radical yeah. you know in the country so well in the words of barack obama never underestimate uh, joe biden's ability to f things up all right we've got more to come
first we want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar. So, did, have you did you try the Built Bar? They were great. I ate them both. Really? Yeah. Okay, good. So good. You so have so more? I gave, yeah, I do have more. Okay. You want some more? I would love some okay, more. Okay, I'll I'll give you some more. I'm I am known as like the Built Bar dealer of the building. You're I'm cultivating. Like, you, you need, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? You need this flavor. You need this flavor. I've got them all. Uh, so for you out there, unfortunately, you don't work with me. So you don't get to uh, have me as your Built Bar dealer. But what you can do is go on to Built.com. Go get a mixed box. You can try a couple of each of their nine regular flavors. Uh, by the way, for those of you who have not yet heard of Built Bar, I don't know what hole you've been living in, but they are a protein bar. Uh, they're all covered in 100% chocolate. So they taste like you're eating a candy bar, but they are all 180 calories or less. They've got four to five grams of sugar, four to five net carbs, uh, and they've got that high protein. So you're going to feel like you're cheating on your diet, but you're not. All right, go to built.com, use promo code NEWS15. You'll save 15% off of your first order over at built, B-U-I-L-T dot com, promo code NEWS15. Uh, yesterday, we brought you the story of Joe Biden claiming that they have reached an agreement. The White House has reached an agreement with uh, the ports in Los Angeles to uh, help with the supply chain crisis. Obviously, it's just you just keep the ports open 24-7, which I, I still don't understand how that's going to help when you are understaffed and don't have the manpower to actually work. I don't know how you're going to have the manpower to work longer hours, but hey. Trust the experts, and it's, it's a right? good thing they sold the port to the Chinese, right? <laughs> it's a really I mean, good thing. It's, it's a really it's good, good thing. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Trust yeah. the experts and also China. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. uh, so amidst all of this crisis, uh, apparently he wasn't missed. So I kind of feel bad for him in that regard. But Transportation Secretary, who actually should be involved in this, Pete Buttigieg, has uh, apparently been on paid leave for months as the United States is facing this historic supply chain crisis uh, because he is on uh, paternity leave. He and his husband adopted two newborn babies and uh, they have been on paid leave since mid-August to spend time with those babies. I Listen, look, oh my gosh. I, please, I, I you, mean, get, you, you be the bad guy, not me. Go I'll be the bad guy, okay. <laughs> Pony up, buddy. Go back to work. We're paying you. The taxpayer's paying you. And neither of you pushed a baby out of your uterus. Thank okay? you. Neither of you. <laughs> neither of you are recovering from a cesarean. Okay? <laughs> or blood clots. Is your milk, is your mil you, is your your milk, milk coming in? Oh, his right. milk's been in. He, he, it's all he eats is mama's milk. Okay? He's a mother. He's, mama's soy. He's little Pete. It's soy. What are you it's talking soy. about? He's little Pete. That's all he drinks is mama's Ooh. milk. Okay? Leave for what? Vacation on I the know. taxpayer dollar? Both of them? Call any other any other working man in Dallas, Texas, whose mm -hmm. wife just delivered yesterday and say, "Hey, you're gonna get uh, a month worth of leave." Excuse me. Yeah. This is a joke. Okay. So I say, Pete, show us your uterus. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's contemptible. Ugh. It's 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 totally contemptible. Um, you know, they adopted two kids, right? Which means you don't just show up one day and say, give me two kids and, you know, Uber delivers it. You're prepared. Right? You're, You're prepared. Right. This years. is a long, years, years long process, yes. you know. Maybe you should have thought of this before mm -hmm. you took the gig mm -hmm. as transportation secretary. Mm -hmm. Maybe. You know, it's not like he's a working stiff. And it's like, you know, I've got, I've got a job to do and blah, 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 blah. So it's, this is like, it's a, it's a great honor. He could be making, you know, he could be on a sinecure from a think tank or big donors or, or, or whatever, sitting at home in Indiana or wherever he's from and taking care of the baby. There's no reason he's got to be the transportation secretary. That is a great point because I think that, you know, some people would say, well, he should be able to have the job that he wants to have and have a child, but then you have a decision to make. And if you are the transportation secretary of the United yeah. States, you don't get the luxury of staying home for a month. Go I mean, to do, work. Do you, th yeah. I mean, here's the, th it's like, do you think that someone who is not, I mean, this is like a, a classist point thing too. Yes. Like, do you think yes, someone who I is agree. an NSC staffer, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and, 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 uh, who shows up with this? Oh, are you kidding? My, are you my, kidding? Right. My it's, husband, the, it's absurd even to think about. My husband had uh, had to take his vacation time. He got two weeks, and even that was a very long time. And we had 
multiple issues. There's complications. With multiple issues. With another with child. With my newborn, who yes. Who had to go to school. Mm. Yes. Okay? I'm yes. a father yes. of three. Multiple let, let me issues. Just say this. I, we didn't get that luxury. Let me say this right now, okay? What's going on here? How convenient. When we are in a transportation nightmare, mm -hmm. it, just think, wouldn't you then pick up the red phone and say, hey, pretty Pete, <laughs> I know you're taking a vacation. We got a crisis. Come to work, buddy. Put your rear end the back in the office. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the ships, any other employer, a real employer, mm -hmm. right? But his employer's asleep. He takes it's insurance at 5 o'clock. Right. Well, I he mean, doesn't who, even know. What, what member of the administration is actually expected to do their job? Because you have Kamala as the border czar who refuses <laughs> Missing. to do anything, Missing. right? You have John Kerry as the climate czar who's just jetting around in his private jet right. causing more emissions. And John was hiding because there was an insurrection. He's hiding. Well, yeah. that's fair. He's got PTSD. And then you have uh, Pete Buttigieg who, I don't know, a couple months ago he was like taking his bike out of a gigantic suburban to ride <laughs> around the block with a stupid helmet on. On, and now he's nowhere to be found during a crisis. The most interesting part of the story in my mind is how this came out. I'll bet you all the money in the world. I mean, look, nobody really expects him to do work, right? Yeah. You know, he is a celebrity. He's a poster he's child. He's a poster guy. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's the, it's I the chief of staff. I expect to do work. Yes. It's the a person. Chief, it's a chief of staff yeah. in yeah. there doing it yeah. who, who, you know, dollars to donuts was bitter and leaked the story. I bet you're right. Probably. Who else is going to leak the story? I, but, 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 but what does it say that like, everyone was like, oh, yeah, he was there. <laughs> he was right. Like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I guess we, we haven't, haven't seen, seen him, him that's around. Right. Right. That's right. right, I, right. I guess that is his job, technically. <laughs> no one thought of him. We, we lost a secretary. Yeah. Oh. And nobody yeah, noticed. We forgot yeah. about him. We <laughs> lost a secretary in a crisis. We got ships lining up. Uh, people can't eat. He's on this vacation. is probably like the only Department of Transportation crisis, you know, that we've when had last in like you, decades. When last did you have it? Right. I mean, now he's on leave. Yeah. Well, he was expecting not to do anything for his yeah. job. So he got what he expected. <laughs> you mean, you mean this is proof that, that these leftists get paid for doing nothing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, this is proof. No, but that it's these also Washington. You know, it's Fair. also Washington because, is so sick. That is so because the, you know, the work is being done by you know, whoever is, whoever is under him. And the truth of the matter is these people are human beings. Yes. And they get angry they and jealous mm -hmm. and resentful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying they're wrong. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I just think it's nice to see it coming, uh, it happening on the other side these days. I just, sure. you know, it's like, gosh, we spent four years, five years listening about leaks and, you know, p w anonymous op-eds in, you know, nationwide newspapers and all these things. It's just nice to have a little bit of that happening. On Do you think Trump could well. lose one of his secretaries, just misplace him? No. Like Biden misplaced him? But then again, Biden couldn't find think, the door I, I at the White House. You think? Yeah, I, nah, yeah, yeah. He didn't, I, I, though. I, I think he could. He didn't, yeah. though. No, no. I mean, no, he, 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 didn't. he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. But like, I mean, just for kind of comic reasons, I think it could I could I could have been very funny. <laughs> it could have been very, very funny. Th hey, this is where is this guy? What? I haven't seen him. Fair. This is yeah. this is funny. But if you really think of what the bottleneck this is creating, sure. because oh, there I is know. a crisis. Trust me, I know. This is when you go, uh, Kamala, you should pitch a tent and live on the border. No, not right. there. She goes 40 miles short. Mm -hmm. Sorry, oops, I got lost like the president couldn't find the door to the oh, White I'm House. I'm sorry, the is, the, is the border crisis not at the El Paso airport? Not is quite. Is that not no, where it's it... missed it uh, a little bit. Just okay. so, so the, I mean, realistically, though, the one thing that, you know, transportation secretary, like the one thing that he could have actually done in this situation, because like, I mean, what does he know? Is he the Indiana mayor? Like, right. What does he know about right. supply chains and whatever? The one thing he could have done is said, I have the credibility of the United States Department, I am the, I'm the Secretary of Transportation. Of mm -hmm. So when I pick up the phone, I have, a, I have authority. We wield the power of the office. Right, that's the one and thing that he, that, that, he, that he does, yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he wouldn't know what to tell people to do, but he would be able to at least convey that authority. And not having that around. Like for instance, to give you an example, you know, the President crazy. of the United States says he told Walmart, Doug McMillan, to solve the, you know, the, the, the supply chain crisis, Doug comes out and goes, no, 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 no. We told the White House we're going to do this ourselves. Now we know why. Oops, because we're darn gone and lost our transportation <laughs> secretary. <'Cause, laughs> so now corporations are just saying, 
We'll do it ourselves. I guess we'll go, to, you know, you know, Timothy the tugboat, tow the ships into <laughs> right, the right, harbor right. You know, and go offload them ourselves. <laughs> and Pete, you go get your milk right. and go recover from that nine month heavy pregnancy. Yeah, I mean, endured. look, I, I, I mean, I'm glad that the newborn babies have uh, parents, right? Loving parents, I guess. But it's just really difficult for me because I was planning, I, I again, I had complications with my yeah. younger one. I was planning before the complications arose to come back in a month. And I had the damn baby. <laughs> I had the baby, and, and I, I was nursing this, that baby, and I, this, and I and wanted to come, to back. come back. I tried earlier. so hard. You tried really hard. I tried so hard, and I couldn't. So to hear them just like, oh, just taking all the time that they want, it's like, are you joking? Did you see the picture of the two of them on, their, on the swing? No. It, I'm it praying was for the children right now. It was making the rounds on, on, on Twitter. It was the, 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 you know, the, the happy couple in one seat. Oh, gosh. In a swing. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like a regular size swing? I think it was a, a larger, larger swing okay. that could accommodate the both How of them. How sweet. It was, yeah, uh, it was I'm, very I'm sweet. Magical. Yeah. This is not Mark making fun. I'm legitimately starting to pray for those kids. That is magical. Uh, all right, we've got we've to take a break. But uh, first, we want to thank our sponsor, Bambi. So when running a business, HR issues can kill you. Wrongful termination suits, minimum wage requirements, labor regulations, and HR manager salaries are not cheap. An average of $70,000 a year. Bambi, spelled B-A-M-B-E-E, -E, was created specifically for small business. You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft HR policy, and maintain your compliance all for just $99 a month. With Bambi, you can change HR from your biggest liability to your biggest strength. Your dedicated HR manager is available by phone, email, or real-time chat from onboarding to terminations. They customize your policies to fit your business and help you manage your employees day-to-day -day, all for just $99 a month. Month-to-month, -month, no hidden fees. Cancel anytime. You didn't start your business because you wanted to spend time on HR compliance. Let Bambi help. Get your free HR audit today. Go to Bambi.com slash matters right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash matters. Did you hear that? That's B-A-M-B-E-E dot -E com slash matters. Bambi.com slash matters. We'll be back. All right, I hate to bring things down a notch, but uh, British conservative MP David Ames died today after an attacker stabbed him. He was 69 years old. Uh, he was meeting constituents outside London and someone came up and stabbed him multiple times. Uh, Essex police recovered a knife from the scene and took one person, a 25 year old man, into custody. Um, and law enforcement says that they are not looking for any other suspects in the killing. Um, it just, you know, I, I, I read this and I thought, I realize this is happening in the UK, and I think that we say that often. It's like, well, it's happening in the, in the UK. How much does it affect us? But I think that, you know, d politics, culture, all of these things uh, kind of moves to the United States uh, fairly quickly after being in the UK. And I'm not saying that stabbings, uh, you know, of, of lawmakers are going to happen, but it does bring up, I think, an important conversation about just how divided uh, everything is. And, you know, we talk all the time about everything's in a pressure cooker. We've been dealing with all of these ridiculous mandates and uh, ridiculous policies the last 18 months. And when is something going to break? You have to imagine someone is going to just break, come apart at the seams soon. Soon, And then you see something like this happen. I mean, this man was meeting constituents and he was stabbed to death. I think it's very indicative of where culture is today. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it absolutely points to us because culture, you know, there was a time when you could draw really hard lines between the European culture. And even in Europe, you could go and really divide French from the Italians. Mm -hmm. It's so it's so blended and just- We're all making each other crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, and, it's and back the, and forth. And the pressure yeah. is so high and the young, the young people, and yes, I call them young people, any 30s and under, right? What, they, what they're subjecting themselves to and what they're enduring and the lack of stability, the lack of foundational truth, the back and forth, what is up, what's down, am I here, am I there? No human being can sustain it. Arlington shooting, 18-year-old mm -hmm. kid. And so we're seeing young, young people now, 25, 
And how does he have access that easy to an MP? I mean, why is this guy not protected? Yeah, I, don't know, he, I don't know the conditions on, on the environment, but he was talking to constituents and maybe it was close yeah. proximity. He was meeting inside a church, Any, by the way. Anybody, yeah, was, yeah, anybody can get to anybody at any moment. Yeah. You know, unless you, I mean, unless you're the president. You know, but this is close, so it's a know, knife stabbing. This right. is not a gun shot. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. Real no, it's close. true. And we, we, I mean, look, I mean, I don't want to jump to conclusions about motive yeah. and whatever, because, I mean, uh, you know, just, I don't usually do this, but let, let's say taking what the police say at face value and they're not looking for other suspects, it could be we're talking about a deranged yeah. person yeah. who was just or like, disgruntled. Okay, disgruntled for yeah. some reason or whatever. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But but you know, I, I you know, I wouldn't commit to saying that it was necessarily necessarily an ideological mm. um uh, that's fair. motive maybe that's fair. it maybe it is yeah. i mean you know it could be i think the most interesting angle here is the fact that if he would have been uh you know a labor um you know or 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 Labor's left party, yeah. a left-leaning mp you know they would have burned the, the the country down you know the media would have burned the country mm -hmm. down yeah. uh screaming exactly. about no, the climate of, course, of hate of and whatever this is just gonna and that's this what just i mean it's indicative of regardless of motive today. yeah yeah conservative bad anywhere in the world right mm -hmm. now, right? It's not just, and, and, and it was never like that. But it, I don't know, there may be, there may be some other motive. It's a politician and it's a right-leaning politician. And so you could imagine, we don't have the facts, we'll see, but what was the speech and what's the run-up and what's the, what's the heavy points he's hitting at the moment and what is he fighting for? And so some kid picked up a sword or a cause mm -hmm. and I think regardless, too, um, it, it does speak to the culture of just uh, the younger generation, I think, is just desensitized yeah. to uh, anything like that. I, we they don't they don't value life. Correct. Right. They've been they've Correct. been taught. They've been indoctrinated from such an early age that you can kill babies up to yeah. the point in yeah. which they are born. You oh, and, you know, even then, you know, whatever, if, if you're listening to Ralph Northam. So I just think that like it, they, they're just living in this culture where we don't really value life. They've got over. Where is it in the Nordic countries that they do mm -hmm. uh, assisted suicides and stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, how well, can we expect them to value like it's life a TV game? Yeah, no, like this is a like this is an Xbox game in yeah. life. You can just take a life, yeah. like it's nothing. Look, you know? I mean, to 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 bring it back to uh, to to the beginning, or saying like how many how many years can you go with by you know and and tell people that you know the the, the you know climate change is going to destroy mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. and everyone on the yes. planet, and you know for people not to actually internalize that. Yep. And say, point. okay, well, you know, I mean, we've got to act because literally we're all going to die. Yeah, so, but it's like yeah, anything you know, else. It's like saying I mean, the if you're fighting Nazis, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, but the yes, unvaccinated yes, or whatever. Yes. The unvaccinated, the you know? ones that's killing everybody in this country. Yes. That's a flat out lie. But yeah. you're going to breed animosity. Oh, that's sure. right. That is literally from Sun Tzu Art of War. Right. Mm -hmm. This is how if I have a problem with you, I don't fight you. I get someone else to fight you. You divide and conquer. And this is the tactic today. Mm -hmm. and, and they are breeding the hate. Yeah. 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 All right. We got to take a break. We'll be back. All right, it is a uh, hate mail Friday, which means my producer brings up uh, hate mail for me to read to everyone Ooh. else to embarrass me. And so <laughs> here is the first one from uh, the Atlanta Mafia. Oh, you have a pretty face. Can I spank you? I guess that's not technically hate mail, but uh, still very inappropriate. And the answer is no, you may not. Uh, we don't tolerate corporal punishment at my house. Uh, here's one more. Okay, here's one. Uh, oh, oh, I remember this one. Okay, oh, this, this one is was a good one. Yeah, this one was uh, this someone just trying to give me a psychic reading. I'll give you a psychic reading. Can I interest you in a psychic reading? Hello, dumb bitch was very mad that I did not want the psychic reading. That is basically, <laughs> that is basically the, you know, the, uh, the internet yes. encapsulate, the whole internet yeah. encapsulated into yeah. one little exactly. exchange. Well, and they're always you like, know. you, what, you're not going to answer me? What was you're the time so span? rude. And what then if the I could answer span? them. And I, probably like a day. Yeah, 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 exactly. I wasn't going to exactly. answer them anyway. Anyway, not. thank you, gentlemen, thank for you. being here. Thank I appreciate you. It. Great to be here. We'll yeah. see you guys Monday.